Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me today as we take kind of a deep dive into a collecting guilty pleasure of mine, in the baseball realm anyway, and that is the buyback card from Topps. Um, so I, I'm an unabashed fan of these things. Um, it's, it's a relatively new concept in the overall timeline of baseball cards when you think about the fact that they've existed for over 100 years now. Uh, these foil stamp buybacks that we're going to cover in today's video uh, have only really come about in the last 15 years. Um, so they're relatively new. And every once in a while, I run into someone who asks me the question, what, what is a Topps buyback? And it's just a little bit unclear or sort of a niche um, thing in, in baseball card collecting. And so since I love them so much and since I have almost an unhealthy number of them here at uh, Shoebox Legends World Headquarters, I thought it would be good to shoot just a quick video here, walk through uh, the history of the foil stamped buybacks that I love, and just kind of give an explanation to maybe educate some some of you on what the buyback program has looked like over the years. Um, so basically, basically, a buyback is exactly what it sounds like. So the, in front of you here, you have original Topps baseball cards of a 1959 Bob Friend and a 1984 Steve Carlton. Uh, these are just the standard cards that you and I pulled from packs as a kid, and a lot of us still do to this day. And the buybacks are exactly what they sound like. So Tops will buy back uh, actual issued baseball cards on the secondary market or from collectors or dealers. They will somehow mark them. Uh, in the case of the cards we're looking at today, it's with a foil stamp to indicate that they're buybacks and, and differentiate from the originals. And then they will reissue them to collectors in a variety of different formats as basically like inserts or uh, parallels you could think of of the original cards almost. So this program started with a couple of exceptions that we're not going to cover in today's video back in 2008. So in 2008, of course, the Topps Heritage release was paying tribute to the 1959 Topps baseball set. So Topps came up with a concept of buying back a bunch of 1959 Topps cards, stamping each of them with this 50th anniversary foil stamp that you see here, and then issuing them as box toppers in Topps Heritage hobby boxes. So if you bought a hobby box of 2008 Topps Heritage, you had a shot that one of your, uh, or chance that your box topper would be one of these cards. Um, they were individually wrapped. You received just one in a, in a wrapper, and uh, it would be a card like the one you see here. That proved to be a very successful concept for Tops with the Heritage release. So they've continued that on in the 2009 set. Same exact program, same exact stamp, also available as one per box, box toppers in Heritage. Only difference being they used 1960 cards, which were the inspiration behind the Heritage set that year. And so that trend continued on its own for a couple more years. So in 2010, we had the 1961 set as the inspiration, and those were the buybacks that year in Heritage. Uh, they did get a silver stamp that year instead of gold, which is a little bit unique in the program. Moving on from that in 2011, same deal, back to the gold stamp, and of course 1962 Topps cards being the source of these buybacks. 2012, same deal, moving right up in the years, same stamp, and of course, 1963 cards were used for the Heritage buybacks that year. 2013, this is the last year for a little while that Heritage was the only place you could get a buyback. So these were, once again, Heritage box toppers, 1964 tops cards were the source. And they get the same foil stamp, which is with updated years on the bottom there of 1964 and 2013. And then we got to 2014, and that's where things expanded out a little bit for a period of a few years. So in 2014, we still had the Heritage Buyback Program featuring 1965 Topps cards, just like you see here and like we've seen every year up to this point. But Topps expanded in 2014 and included some buybacks in some of their other product lines. And those are recognizable because they all use this vintage uh, Topps 75th foil stamp on the cards. And the difference with these, other than the stamp being different, 
unlike the Heritage box topper buybacks, you could pull a buyback uh, in of a, you know in a different product with this stamp on it, with an original source card from anywhere from 1957 all the way through I think 1979, if I'm not mistaken. So obviously the bulk of them were cards from the 70s, and the further back you went in time, the harder to pull one of those older cards it became. Uh, but nonetheless, you could technically get a card from the late 50s all the way up through the late 70s with one of these top 75th stamps on it, like the one you see here. The other difference with those, and this is the only time that Topps did that in the buyback program history that I'm aware of, they actually used two different size foil stamps in 2014. So you can see the Frank Fernandez card that we have in the front here has a relatively small foil stamp. And the 1976 Bob Bailey that we have behind it has uh, the same stamp, but much larger in size. Uh, but regardless of what the size is, if you encounter a card that has this top 75th foil stamp on it, then you have yourself a 2014 buyback. Moving into 2015, the Heritage Buyback Program continued with, of course, 1966 source cards that were stamped as the one per box box toppers. But in 2015, the non-heritage program continued as well. Um, my recollection I was collecting at the time is that these were only available in the update set and the flagship update set this year. Um, but these contain a Topps original 2015 buyback stamp. So uh, much like the 2014 non-heritage buybacks, these ranged from all different years. Uh, from the early, or I'm sorry, the late 50s through the late 70s, I believe. Um, I don't think there were 1980 or newer cards included in this program. Um, and again, just like the 2014s, the older cards or the star cards are much more desirable and harder to find than commons from the 70s. But if you find one with this Topps original stamp, that is a 2015 buyback. Moving into 2016, the Heritage box toppers continued. Same gold stamp, 1967 tops as the source for these. And then this uh, year, they also did a non-Heritage program, and it was their 65th anniversary program. And you can see they used a much different logo for these non-Heritage buybacks this year. It's a 65th anniversary logo. And in this year, these came in a variety of different colors. So uh, this Jerry Morales from 78 is obviously a red. Here's an Eric Davis from my beloved 1990 set in a gold. Uh, there's also, I believe, blue. I know there's black. And these, uh, the color of the foil indicated varying degree of rarity of the card. Um, so that was something new that began in, in 2016 that we hadn't seen prior to that. 2017 was the greatest year for buybacks. Tops kind of went out with a bang on the non-Heritage program. But before we get to that, they did continue the Heritage box topper buybacks in 2017 Heritage, with obviously 1968 cards being the source material for these. But also in 2017, they really took the non-heritage buybacks to a whole nother level. So they came up with a Rediscover Tops buyback promotion is how they branded it. The foil stamp for this year, as you can see, is just a really simple all caps font Rediscover Tops. But the difference this year was uh, like the like the 2016 non-heritage buybacks. These do come in different color foil. This one here happens to be a bronze, which is the most common. Um, but these cover a much wider range of years, first and foremost. So I have seen uh, rediscover tops buybacks that are as old as 1957 cards. And I've seen them that are as new as, you know, cards that were, you know, only a year or two old in 2017. So they span the late 50s all the way up to the mid 2010s um, and tops included these buybacks in a ton of different products so even like i think allen and ginter 
packs in 2017, you could find Rediscover Tops buybacks. They really took this Rediscover promotion and pushed it, you know, across a variety of their product line, uh, much more so than they'd done in any prior year. So that is a bronze. They also had silver Rediscover Top stamps. There were gold, and I'm showing these uh, from least rare to most rare. Uh, in addition to that, they also had a pretty rare blue, which I think was the toughest one to get. I don't recall if there was maybe a red that was even tougher than blue, but you get the idea. There were multiple colors that indicated uh, varying degrees of scarcity. One of the things that confuses people about buybacks, and, and I think Tops didn't really do themselves much of a, a service here on how they handled this, but you would think, looking at this John Felsky blue, that this means this is a rare card to find in buyback form. It does not mean that, though. It just means there aren't a lot of John Felskys that are stamped blue. But there are plenty of John Felskys that are stamped silver and bronze and so on and so forth. So if you're like a player collector, you may even be able to find a, a, a card of your player with three or four different color Rediscover Top stamps you know, on the same original source card. So just something I wanted to touch on there because I've heard some confusion on that in the past. And unfortunately, after 2017, Tops killed off. I think they went a little bit overboard maybe with flooding everybody with the Rediscover Tops promo and, and uh, just decided it was time to call it quits. So after 2017 and heading into 2018, we went back to a scenario where it was the Heritage Box Topper buyback only, the sort of uh, four-year run there of, uh, that I consider the heyday of foil stamp buybacks was at an end, and we just got these 1969-based Heritage Box Toppers. Same thing in 2019, with 1970 tops being the source for these. In 2020... The program continued. This is a beautiful Gil Hodges, by the way. Look at those piercing blue eyes. Uh, so in 2020, we still got these with the 1971 tops being the source. And then while I don't have one handy at the moment, uh, as most of you know, if you've watched any box breaks or are familiar with the product, uh, the Heritage buybacks uh, box toppers are still in play this year. You'll find them uh, atop your 2021 hobby boxes and they are obviously 1972 tops cards that sourced that buyback program. Don't have one in front of me, but I, I think you get the point. There's been enough uh, repetitiveness here, and uh, I expect the Heritage program to continue for, for years to come. I, I sort of hope that it does. Uh, there's a ton of collectors, particularly in the Heritage buyback realm, that really pay up for these things or go nuts collecting them, so I do think uh, they'll continue to stick around, and... Uh, I doubt we'll see other buyback lines like we saw from 2014 through 2017, but uh, I still have fun collecting them. I've got thousands of these things around. And so again, just wanted to kind of take a tour, show you uh, the brief history of Topps foil stamped buybacks and uh, just do kind of an educational run through here. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you stuck with me through 13 minutes of buyback baseball card talk, I certainly commend you for that. And I uh, appreciate it, all the support, all the comments and camaraderie in the hobby. And I will be back soon with some more content. Take care.